So a year or two ago, I was lying in bed at like three in the morning thinking about some bad thing I had done. I don't remember what the bad thing was. An embarrassing faux pas, a career blunder, a capital crime. But anyway, the guilt or self-reproach or whatever was making it hard to get back to sleep. And then I had a thought that helped me get back to sleep and that has helped me get back to sleep on other occasions since then. Here's the thought. God forgives you even if there is no God. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that doesn't make any sense. Well, obviously it doesn't make sense, strictly speaking. Why does everyone have to be so literal? But hear me out, okay? So what is God? I mean, supposing there is a God. Well, unless I'm misremembering my Sunday school lessons, part of the answer is omniscient. God knows everything. For example, God knows why I did the bad thing I did. He, and yes, the God I grew up with was a he, so let's just go with that pronoun for purposes of this one thought experiment. He understands the causes that led me to do the bad thing I did. Maybe the cause was that I was under intense deadline pressure, or I was confused, or I hadn't had my morning coffee, or I had had too much morning coffee, or whatever. And you know the French saying, To comprendre, c'est tout pardonner. It means, to understand all is to forgive all. Of course, some causes of our behavior seem less exculpatory, as they say in court, than others. It's one thing to do something bad because you're under pressure or confused or over-caffeinated. It's another thing to do something bad because you're just a raging egomaniac. Should being a raging egomaniac be a valid excuse for behaving like a raging egomaniac? Well, part of being an omniscient god is getting the big picture. And that would mean seeing that humans are products of natural selection and knowing that natural selection tends to create creatures with a certain self-centeredness, right? I mean, honestly, how many non-egomaniacs are there in our species? God also, being omniscient, understands the factors that make some of us more ragingly egomaniacal than others. You know, something in my genes, something in my early environment, something in my later environment. In short, even when the causes of our bad behavior seem not very flattering, causes like being an egomaniac or being a hateful or spiteful person or whatever, understanding the causes of those causes makes us seem less condemnable, more forgivable. And God would be good at understanding the causes of the causes. I mean, he is God, right? Here's the overall point. Presumably, there's always something that causes your behavior. And God, knowing what that something is, would find it easier to forgive you than, say, your enemies would. Or than you would when you're lying awake at night feeling bad about some bad thing you did. Another thing about God is that he doesn't play favorites. He transcends the narrow perspectives of individuals and groups. In Sunday school, we used to sing a song about how he loved all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Now, strictly speaking, the song attributed that view to Jesus, not God per se. But see, in the Christian view, Jesus is God. And actually, so is the Holy Ghost. But I don't want to open up that can of worms right now. Anyway, God's lack of tribal affiliation lets him look at all of us objectively. Which I guess is one reason it's so easy for him to see the things that cause our behavior. He's not blinded by bias. Now suppose God doesn't exist. Suppose there isn't this supernatural being occupying this very special vantage point. A vantage point from which everything is clear. 
a vantage point that privileges no tribe and no person. Well, it's still the case that, from this very special vantage point, a vantage point from which everything is clear, a vantage point that transcends all biases, you deserve forgiveness. There. Feel better? Well, this made me feel better, and I drifted back to sleep as I imagined this transcendent vantage point, this very special space out there somewhere. Now, in a way, I was cheating, because I kind of imagined forgiveness and even love actually emanating from the special space, like pouring down on me and washing over me. And if that space is unoccupied, then what would be generating the forgiveness and love I felt emanating from it? But hey, sleep is important, so I decided not to get hung up on that particular question. Besides, the special space may be occupied. Who am I to say? By the way, the same logic that suggests that you deserve forgiveness suggests that everyone else deserves forgiveness, which in turn suggests that you should forgive everyone you're mad at. Sorry to slip that in there at the end, because I know it's kind of a jarring thought. But maybe if you reflect on it at length, and really take it on board, it, too, will help you sleep better at night.